Welcome to EnrichMinds.com and our session on debit and credit cards. We shall cover what they mean and what the differences are. When should you use one versus the other? Should you even use these cards? Let's dive in. Both debit cards and credit cards are payment cards or modes for payment. Prepaid cards and gift cards are another kind of payment card and are just special cases of debit cards. Hence, they are sometimes called prepaid debit cards. The word debit means remove from customer's account, and the word credit means a loan. That should explain what these two types of cards are but we shall dig in further into each type of card. Let's get started with debit cards. Remember, prepaid cards or gift cards are just the special type of debit card. A debit card is a payment card that deducts money directly from a consumer's checking account when it is used. Also called check cards or bank cards, they can be used to buy goods or services or to get cash from an automated teller machine or ATM or a merchant who let you add an extra amount onto a purchase. Using a debit card is just like using cash in your bank account without the inconvenience of carrying your cash around. Cash can get lost but a debit card is secured with your own personal unique and secret code in case it gets lost. Remember, a debit card will be declined if there is insufficient cash in the bank account for you to complete the transaction. In other words, you can only spend what you have in the account and nothing more. As soon as you withdraw or authorize a payment, the cash is taken out of your bank account. A debit card number requires a secret number, a four-digit unique PIN or personal identification number for validating and making ATM transactions or even payments for purchases both online or in retail stores. This number should never be told to anyone. On the issue of a debit card, banks allow customers to set this PIN to ensure that it is a number that can be easily remembered. Banks also enable seamless reset of this PIN in case the PIN is wrongly set up or forgotten for any reason. So, a PIN or personal identification number is a secret four-digit number that must be generated as soon as you get your ATM or debit card. A prepaid card is a card you can use to pay for things. You buy a card with money loaded on it. Then you can use the card to spend up to that amount. A prepaid card is also called a prepaid debit card or a stored value card. You can buy prepaid cards at many stores and online. The major difference between a prepaid card and a debit card is that a prepaid card is not linked to a bank account, but the cash is loaded electronically on the prepaid card and is debited as you spend or withdraw the cash. Otherwise, it acts and works just like a debit card. Next, let's understand credit cards. A credit card is a financial instrument that allows the cardholder to make transactions without paying for it instantly. The credit card issuing company pays the amount authorized and then sends a statement to the cardholder at the end of each month. If you pay off the outstanding total on time, there's nothing more to it. But if you do not pay it off on time, then that outstanding amount becomes your loan and you have to start paying interest on it. 
Each credit card comes with a spending limit. The spending limit is called a credit limit, and it is the maximum amount you can spend before paying it off. Your spending limit is determined by your credit score, as we discussed in the last session. Remember that your credit card is basically a loan that you have to pay off in case you use it to purchase something. And oftentimes, credit card interest rates are very, very high. So be careful using a credit card in case you are not able to pay off the spending amounts on time. In 1958, Bank of America introduced their first credit card and called it the Bank AmeriCard and sent it to 60,000 residents of Fresno, California. There was no looking back. Today, there are almost 400 million open credit cards in the United States alone, a little more than one for every person in the country. Until 1974, women needed their husbands to co-sign to get a credit card. Sadly, women are charged higher interest rates on average even today, despite laws against such discrimination. Let's now look into the different features of your card. This is the front of your card. 1. Bank Branding Your bank or credit card issuer will likely put their name and logo on the top. 2. Card Number Then you have a string of four four-digit numbers totaling 16 digits. That is your credit card or debit card number. Every card has a unique number, and the card number is what enables you to withdraw money from your bank account and make a purchase. Hence, it is very important not to share your card number with anyone. 3. Cardholder Name Your full name will be inscribed on the card, and often the name as it appears on the card must match the input for online purchases. 4. Smart chip. Newer cards come with modern smart chips that allow for touchless transactions and communications via the chip versus the magnetic stripe on the back of the card. 5. Expiration date. The card has a date after which that card will expire and you will need to get a replacement card. 6. Payment network. Finally, on the bottom right, you will have a logo of the card processor, most likely Visa or MasterCard, the two largest global card processors. Now let's look at the back of your card. 1. Magnetic Stripe You have a long black magnetic stripe. This stripe contains all the information relating to the card and is used for all data communications to and from the bank. 2. Hologram There may be a hologram, which is a security feature. 3. Bank information The bank information is printed on the back, telling you who to call in case of any problems or if someone finds a lost card. 4. Signature area you must sign in the strip provided. A merchant will often verify and check your signature if you are signing on a payment slip. This is now rarely used in modern days with other more reliable ways to authenticate payments. 5. Security Code or CVV CVV stands for Card Verification Value. The three digits you see are the CVV of your card. CVV is a three-digit number on the back of every credit card. CVVs are different for different cards and are like an additional password to make sure that you are the only person using your card. Hence, it is essential that you do not share your CVV with anyone. And six, network logo. Finally, there's a logo of the credit card processor in the back as well. So now let's understand the benefits of a credit card. 
Credit cards can offer the following advantages. Easy to use online, offer solid protections if your card is lost or stolen or misused, can help you build your credit history, and may let you earn rewards when you spend on the card. Depending on the card you choose, you could earn rewards such as cash back, airline miles, or points you can put toward a range of different uses. You typically need to already have rock solid credit in order to qualify for the best rewards deals. So how do you use a card for payment online? You need to enter the card number, the expiry date, and the three digit CVV number found on the back side of the card to make a purchase. CVV stands for card verification value. The card number CVV should always be kept secret and not be told to anyone. There are other security features that may be used. In some countries, once the details are entered, an OTP or one-time password is triggered to your registered mobile number, which needs to be entered at the merchant's site to complete the transaction. OTP provides an extra layer of protection. OTP is not a commonly used feature in the United States. So now that we know the benefits of debit and credit cards, why do banks give us cards and encourage us to use these cards? What's in it for them? Banks spend a lot of money acquiring credit card customers. They spend a lot of money in marketing and encouraging us to spend and use their cards. Often banks also offer inducements like points, cashback offers, and discounts if we use their cards. Why? because debit and credit cards are a very profitable business line for banks. First, let's look at debit cards. When we pay for a purchase using a debit card, the bank collects a transaction fee. It typically ranges from 1.5% to 2.5% of the total purchase. For example, if we buy a dress for $100, the bank takes $100 from our account but only pays, say, $98 to the seller, so the bank earned $2. Second, in addition to the same merchant fees, when it comes to credit cards, banks often charge us an annual membership fee and also charge very high interest on late payments and outstanding balances. Effectively, an outstanding credit card balance is a very high interest loan for the bank. In summary, let's now compare a credit card to a debit card. But first, let's revisit some of the key terms. Credit limit refers to the maximum amount a client can borrow from a bank. Purchase protection is a common credit card benefit that allows consumers to file a claim with their issuer to receive replacement, repair for any eligible stolen or damaged items, Major credit card networks, such as MasterCard and Visa, have policies for purchase protection. Debt, a sum of money that is owed or due. A credit score is a number between 300 to 850 that depicts a consumer's credit worthiness. The higher the score, the better a borrower looks to potential lenders. A credit card lets you borrow money when you need it and pay it back later. Banks, credit unions, and stores offer credit cards, and the fees, APRs, and rewards they come with can vary. Credit cards can help you build good credit if you use them responsibly or bad credit if you don't. Credit and debit cards do make the world go around. If you put all the credit cards in the world, more than 2.8 billion end-to-end -end they would wrap around the earth more than three times. Let's now watch a short video courtesy of CNBC. It's great to be able to just pull out the plastic when you have no cash on hand, but what type of card should you use, credit or debit? 
Want extra protection? Like to earn cash back? Then using a credit card makes the most sense. Some credit cards offer purchase protection or an extended warranty on big ticket items. Others may reimburse you for items that are defective, damaged, lost, or stolen. Booking a hotel or filling up on gas? Some places may put a temporary hold on debit cards, so use a credit card instead so that you don't tie up available funds in your checking account. You can also reap some serious rewards with credit cards. Get cash back on charges for gas, groceries, restaurants. A couple may spend as much as $500 a month on groceries. Now, cash back cards vary in percentages, some as high as 6%. If you're lucky enough to get that percentage, at the end of the year, you'll have an extra $360 to put towards savings. On the other hand, debit cards can give you quick access to cash with no interest, no worries about your credit score, and can sometimes curb your urge to overspend. Use a debit card if you're really trying to stick to your budget, because debit cards will only allow you to use the money that you currently have, or else you're going to face overdraft charges. Can't afford to pay your credit card balance in full every month? Then use a debit card, because you don't want to rack up interest charges. And if you have a tendency to pay bills a little bit late, then stay away from credit cards. The last thing you want to do is have a credit history of late payments. Until you're able to manage your bills, stick with debit cards, or better yet, just use cash. Now that you know all about debit and credit cards, let's look at the key takeaways. Remember, you are spending your own money with a debit card, but a credit card is a loan. You have to pay it back. The sooner the better, else you'll be paying very high interest rates. They look identical but they really are very, very different. Credit cards are a loan and using credit cards can get you into a debt spiral. Be careful. Thank you for your time. Until next time then, stay enriched and strong.